pleasure to be able to present to you this afternoon um, a report on the state of the public service which focused on the 2010 World Cup soccer, uh, a very topical um, subject and I'm sure something that will be of interest to all of you. Uh, it's already been pointed out what the Public Service Commission does. It investigates, monitors and evaluates public administration. What the state of the public service reports do is provide an analysis of the performance of the public service according to a framework of the nine constitutional values and principles. And what I will do this afternoon is indicate to you what we found when we did this evaluation, which was two years before the games which are being successfully held right now, and to demonstrate what the link is between monitoring and evaluation, sound public administration, and of course, a successful World Cup. In terms of the SOPS reports, these really are a series of high-level annual oversight reports which, as I indicated, provide an overview of the performance of the public service. The public service in South Africa employs 1.2 million public servants and serves a population of over 45 million. And it is very central to the performance of the state. It is key in terms of bringing about the transformation of the country and is the largest employer in the country. It is for this reason that it's important that we have a well-performing public service. And this can only be achieved if we have sound monitoring and evaluation or oversight. The Public Service Commission, a constitutional body uh, which has been established in Section 196 of the Constitution, is able to do its work without fear, favor, or prejudice. And a part of its work is actually providing analysis, investigation, and review of performance. Now, whereas there are various uh, templates for good governance, we have a nine-point template which we refer to as the nine constitutional values and principles for public administration. So what I will take you through this afternoon are these nine values and principles and demonstrate how they are important in terms of the performance of the public service, but more specifically its pertinence in terms of the World Cup which is being held right now. The reports are based on oversight work of the PSC, but also draws on extensive research, both with the, within and outside government. So we are able to, in a few pages, produce an analysis on each principle, but demonstrate very clearly what has been done and what needs to be done in terms of performance. Now, each edition is also based on a specific theme, and the theme for this year has been the state of readiness of the public service for 2010, 2010 and beyond. And I'm happy to note that we were fortunate to present this report to the President and Cabinet, who immediately adopted the recommendations and ensured that the various ministers and the various portfolios acted on what we had to say. And this report is available on our website for you. On the right-hand side, you'll find our nine-point definition of good governance, which ranges from professional ethics to the efficient, effective use of, uh, of resources, a development-oriented public service, uh, that ensures that it delivers services fairly and equitably, that promotes public participation, transparency, uh, accountability, good human res resource management, and career development, and is representative. Now, in terms of international definitions of good governance, you'll find that many of those, um, those indicators are also found within our somewhat broad definition of good governance. And this is a definition that ought not only incorporates the best practice internationally, but also provides very specific focus in terms of issues that need attention in South Africa. For example, the question of representativity and also good human resource management and career development given the history of, of the country and the apartheid past. Now, principle one states that a high standard of professional ethics must be, pro uh, must be promoted. And ethics is very central to the whole question of corruption, which is a key issue in terms of good governance. We noted that the hosting of the World Cup involves a lot of resources. And it was important that a professional public service, which is quite central to the effective delivery of the World Cup, does not tolerate corru corruption and inspires public confidence in, in, in terms of its work. And this really could not be overemphasized. Now, based on its oversight work, the PSC believes that critical areas for, Im for improvement must include the management of misconduct. In other words, cases take too long and sanctions are inconsistent. Financial disclosures of senior managers who can be quite susceptible to being corrupt. We had an 80% compliance rate in 2007-8. And very important, responding to cases from the National Anti-Corruption Hotline, 
our 24-7-365 facility, which operates in 11 languages, which allows any citizen to call in and complain about anything that they observe, which may be a miss in the public service. Cases reported, we have recouped 100 million rands, and we've had several dismissals. So clearly there is a, a space for the public to also participate in the good governance of its public service. And of course, an important issue is the whole question of tenders, and here we had focused on supply chain management. Now, it has been recognized several years ago that really to fight corruption requires partnership. And we had a quite an effective partnership through a national anti-corruption forum between government, business, and civil society. Because even if you look at the hosting of the World Cup, we have people from each of these elements that are involved uh, in, in, in the hosting. And any of the elements can be subject to corruption, can be susceptible. Therefore, it's important that a broad-based approach be taken. And a broad-based approach most certainly was taken. And the forum has been quite successful in that regard. So in terms of this principle, which resonates with the international definitions pertaining to, to corruption, anti-corruption, uh, ethics, this is what we found in terms of the assessment that we had undertaken. And we came up with a set of very specific recommendations in terms of what needed to be done but largely relating to the whole question of the declaration of conflicts of interest and ensuring that there was high levels of transparency and accountability because billions of rands was involved in terms of the hosting of the event. And government was quite central in all of that, whether it was infrastructure, the building of the stadia, or the ancillary services that went with it. The second principle or value also linking to international definitions is the whole question of financial management, which we, which we term the efficient, economic, and effective use of resources. In a country the size of South Africa, with high demands for improving the lives of people, it's important that the budget is, is managed extremely well, that there's no wastage. And in that regard, we looked and we drew on the work of the Auditor General, the National Treasury, and we examined in great detail what the historic performance has been, but also what were the systems, and how do the systems ensure that there is no wastage. Because in terms of the event, there was a huge, and there has been a huge influx of sports tourists. And most clearly, um, these tourists, the moment they land, they would be met at the airport. Uh, there's a whole lot of resources that had to be invested. And one wants to be sure that not only do you have a service that is uh, credible, but a service that is also efficient and effective. And I think a lot of the anecdotal information that comes from tourists who are in the country shows that our tourists our ports of entry are working extremely well. The airports have been extremely well managed and extremely efficient. And that clearly indicates that the public service has risen to the, cha uh, to the challenge to ensure that you had a world-class uh, service to, to, to accommodate the, the large number of tourists over a very short period of time. And however, we found that there were certain areas that required attention. And most of these recommendations were, imp were implemented already. Uh, and that links to the whole question of the quality and credibility of travel documents. Uh, we were able to ensure that many people who were blacklisted, uh, the, the so-called hooligans, were sent back because the systems worked. It prevented this problem. That there was queue management at the ports of entry, so no one had to wait for too long. And boosting the capacity of police stations in whole cities. And also improving the, emer the emergency medical services and the skills of public servants, including the whole question of soft skills. How do you, when a foreigner comes, how do you make the person feel welcome? Just to point out, two weeks ago, the security company that was appointed to uh, secure the stadia, there were labor disputes, and their services were contracted. And within a day, the South African Police Service stepped in and has now managed all the stadia very successfully. And here again, it's a question of the public service having come in to really save the day and to, and to ensure that the event has moved smoothly. But what's most important is that the country must not lose focus on building institutional capacity to promote development. It's, not imp it's important that you have this uh, flurry of activity around the, the World Cup, but it's equally important that in the long term, the impetus for high quality services is not lost. The third principle links to the whole question of development orientation. And we really want a public administration that, that grows and enhances both the capacity of the public servants, but also helps in terms of the leverage of resources and producing a public service that is effective. And this really involves reducing the, number of the, the proportion of people who live below the poverty line. 
So whilst you have impressive stadia, you also have a large number of South Africans who live below the, the poverty line, largely uh, a, um, a legacy of apartheid, but irrespective, something that has to be addressed and is being addressed by the South African government. And much of the progress has ridden on the back of favorable economic growth. The hosting of the World Cup has led to a tremendous amount of investment, uh, and, and that has created a whole lot of public works and, and jobs. Uh, there's been major infrastructure development, uh, skills for project planning and implementation. And the public service needs to develop a deeper appreciation of its role in development and poverty reduction. Because irrespective of the uh, success of the event, as long as you have uh, a large proportion of South Africans living below the poverty line and, and battling to eke out a living, it is a problem and it's something that needs to be addressed. And the report goes into great detail about the various programs and both the strengths and successes in terms of dealing with this issue. The fourth principle, which links, which is very, once again, important in the South African context, is the, question, is the question of impartiality, fairness, and equity. And given the apartheid past, which everyone knows about, it's quite clear that these things are very central to the hearts of South Africans. That now that you have a democratic government, they want to be treated fairly. And everyone should, w should have the same opportunity. And this event will be scrutinized to see whether it does indeed open up opportunities for fairness and equity. But focus should not just be on achieving fairness, but also being, being seen to be fair. And perceptions are important, ex as experiences from the recent xenophobic attacks point out. Also, access to opportunity is, is not enough on its own for redress. It's imp important also to promote the use of these opportunities. And a, a legislative piece that is extremely important in South Africa is the promotion of Administrative Justice Act. We find that that is still inadequate. In, our, in other words, there's oftentimes no sufficiently sound reason given for why a decision has been taken. And this is an area of vulnerability, which we pointed out, and an area where performance really actually remains quite unsatisfactory. A critical issue in terms of all governance is that people's needs must be responded to, and the public must participate in policy making so that you have policy that resonates the aspirations of the people. And the preparations for the 2010 have involved encouraging examples of citizen participation. And the manner in which the citizens have embraced the event, uh, the, the hospitality shown, the enthusiasm, has clearly shown that there has been that public participation. So all the policies were actually put out into the public domain for comment. And the comments were taken. They were incorporated. And it really should serve as lessons for the public service. And how do you ensure that you have a public service that is not only relevant but also responsive? Um, a term that's used in South Africa is, is a bizo, which has been noted, where the executives go and have meetings with the citizens to find out what their concerns are, and they record these, and thereafter instructions are given for these issues to be taken care of. Um, however, it was found that the skills in the public service to promote public participation is not receiving adequate attention. So whilst we found that there have been instances of good public participation, unfortunately, in many instances, government departments were not adequately engaging with the citizens. Um, and in this process, citizens should also be treated with courtesy to feel that their views are indeed valued. And the issue of courtesy is also extremely important in South Africa because you had a repressive apartheid public service that treated people on the basis of race and where people actually feared the public service. And now that you have a democratic transition, you want this inclusivity to be there. You want people to, to feel a sense of ownership of the public service. Because after all, the public service exists at the behest of the citizens who ultimately fund those, the, 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 um, the service. The issue of accountability. Critical accountability is also an element of all good governance definitions. And we found that despite the many accountability mechanisms in place, compliance is still not optimal. You have, for example, the performance agreements that are signed between ministers and directors general, between directors general and uh, the, the, the uh, various levels of leadership. Compliance remains unsatisfactory. And we even found uh, instances where certain performance incentives were given without a proper performance appraisal. And this is a source of great concern because you cannot have management working in its own interest. But extremely important is the whole question of performance management is central to bringing about an accountable and efficient public service. 
A further issue which we raise as a, as a concern is the, what we call the qualified audit opinions. And these are the uh, judgments, the evaluations by the Auditor General on the financial performance of departments. And many departments continue to, repeat, uh, to, to receive repeat qualified audits. And it, what was, we found extremely concerning that some of the departments that received these were actually key for the 2010 event. So the whole question of the capacity and the, the, the strength of the departments is really shown in the quality of the, the audit that they received. And other critical areas which needed attention include financial controls, the whole question of risk management to prevent fraud, and of course the capacity to investigate fraud which we found quite limited. The next principle is the whole issue of transparency and we all know that providing timely, accessible and accurate information empowers citizens. And the World Cup and its opportunities have been widely advertised through various media. media. We found that there were pockets of excellence in terms of our, the, the principle of information. Uh, whilst we have an act called the Promotion of Access to Information Act which seeks to foster transparency, the adherence to this remains unfortunately unsatisfactory. And systems for managing requests for information were found to be inadequate. Uh, the possibility of language as an information barrier was also raised. Uh, Eleven official languages in South Africa, yet the language of communication in written form uh, remains dominated as English, which is a problem. But we found overall that there were good practices around, around which departments could, could learn from. In terms of the last two values and principles, the question of good human resource management and career development practices must be cultivated as a principle, as a value. I spoke about the 1,2 million public servants serving over 45 million citizens. And one of the legacies of apartheid was the poor capacity building, the lack of skills, the lack of uh, proper training of public servants. Many who did not have the capacity or were not given opportunities to skill themselves so they could serve the public with distinction. And the area that the Public Service Commission looks at is the extent to which departments provide appropriate skills, training. And we found that it was important that the human, rice, the, the human resource management was accountable. Uh, there's various norms and standards that have been set out in terms of how the human resources of the public service should be managed. But we found that there was, a, there was an inconsistency in how these norms were applied. Of concern, the workplace skills plans are still weak. Uh, filling of posts takes far too long. And many departments were simply unable to complete their human resource plans. And in going forward, strengthening human resource components is a priority to address these challenges. Now, various reports, including earlier editions by, uh, uh, by the Public Service Commission, have focused on the issue of capacity. And we have stated repeatedly that unless you have a well-trained, a capacitated public service, you cannot expect them to implement the sophisticated uh, policies that we have in place. So the issue is not so much the issue of poor policy, but poor implementation linked to to the, the capacity of public servants. And finally, an issue that is very South African, uh, given the, the, the history, is that the public administration must be broadly representative of the people of South Africa. And one of the things that we do is we measure the extent to which targets are met as far as race, as far as gender, as far as disability are met. We do this nationally, we do it departmentally, and we're able to point out where there are still, still concerns. The World Cup, we've noted, and I'm sure is being seen, is an opportunity to showcase the diversity of the country. South Africa is a country with many people, with many languages. And they need to be visible in terms of the entire sector of, of the public service. We found that many of the targets in the public service have been met, but gender and disability remain a challenge. Now, there has been tremendous movement in the last 10 years from a largely white male-dominated public service to one that is now representative at the racial level that is improving as far as gender goes. It's a little over 30%. It was less than 10% 10 years ago. But we also point out that if you take demographics, at least 2% of the public service should be persons with disabilities. So we give opportunities for this. And we've, we've, we've argued that more guidance must be provided on how this can be done by the Department of Labor and the, public, uh, the Departments of Public Service and Administration. 
So in a nutshell, I've condensed a 90-page report uh, by pointing out how we have monitored and evaluated two years ago nine elements of, of governance. And in monitoring and evaluating it, provided a narrative and an analysis and a set of recommendations which have to be acted on in order to ensure that come 2010, the public service would be ready for hosting the games. The games are on as we speak. All indications are that it has been successful. And I would like to, to propose that the reason why the targets have been met, the stadia are filled, and you have a successful event, is that South Africa has had a very strong and vibrant monitoring and evaluation, which not only identifies what the problems are, but identifies and suggests what needs to be done so that come an event like the World Cup, we can actually have a, show, uh, uh, a showcase. Monitoring and evaluation is not just about the punitive, about pointing out the problems. It's also about engaging the diagnosis so that you can provide a very practical solution. And this report has done so, which in a practical way will uh, manifest itself in an event like, 20 ton, uh, uh, like the, the, the 2010 World Cup. Uh, we were asked, what is the relationship between m and &E and, and the World Cup? You could not have a successful World Cup if you do not have monitoring and evaluation. It's as simple as that. And the monitoring and evaluation is not something that just happens in terms of whether the various contracts have been rolled out. It is something that has to be institutionalized as it is within the public service, which is at the center of ensuring the successful World Cup. So I invite all of you to, to read the full report. It's much more um, uh, interesting than what, than what I've presented. Uh, to understand not just the, the issue of the, of the games, but to, uh, to, to, to understand how we have actually managed to link the methodology with the context and the content and the politics to demonstrate the through flow through these various elements. Um, thank you very much.